Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in today's video I will be talking about why I think the Washington football team's defense has started to turn a corner and why I think they will start to improve rapidly in the next few weeks. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content. Also, make sure to hit that like button and turn on those notifications. It really, really helps out the channel a ton. And make sure you guys check out WinView to, you know, enter some nice contests and possibly win some money. Let's get right into the video. Also, guys, I did a stream yesterday with Wangadi previewing the Washington football team versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers game tomorrow. So make sure you guys go ahead and check that out. It's pretty fun. And tomorrow, I likely will be doing a pregame stream for the game so make sure you also stay tuned for that so there's no denying that the Washington football team's defense has been extremely disappointing so far this season they had very high expectations expectations and yes and you know last year they finished the year extremely strong they were going up against you know not great competition but they still were playing even against the better competition much better than they have this year like end of the year against the Steelers who you know they weren't an amazing offense they were still a good offense last year we you know played pretty well against them the Seahawks we held them to I think 20 points um so it's not like we were doing terrible against the bad competition we were early on in the year but you know the defense was still good last year it just wasn't elite like a lot of us including myself thought it was and you know this year They've kind of proven that. They've been very disappointing, um, especially, you know, the first eight games of the season. Though I do think the last couple games, they've shown a little bit of promise. But, I mean, let's just look at, you know, week by week a little bit. The first game, you know, they only allowed 20 points to the Chargers, which isn't bad. But they just got gashed all day. It should have been more than 20. And also, I mean, they the Chargers offense chewed up all the clock because and, you know, kept Washington's offense off the field the next week they allowed 29 points to the new york giants and really should have been 40 um drop touchdown by Darius slayton you know the miss or yeah and also you know daniel jones's touchdown run uh run got you know wiped off the board we allow 43 to the bills you know they're a great offense but we cannot be letting up 43 we allow 30 points to the falcons had a lot of drops in that game as well could have been more 33 to the saints um, and then, you know, the next three weeks, even though we allowed 31 of the Chiefs, I thought we played better in that game. Then we allowed 24 of the Packers and 17 of the Broncos. I think it's been much better the last three weeks. And I'm going to talk about some reasons why and why I'm a little bit encouraged by the defense. No, I do not think it's going to be, you know, they're going to be a top five defense at the end of the year. But I think they're going to be playing much better much better and I think a you know big reason why they've been better the last few weeks is because they've cut down on the miscommunication a ton I mean you can remember every single week um, almost from week one until probably about the Chiefs game maybe the Packers game where there's been a blown coverage I mean every single week I mean the Giants game the Darius Slayton play we got lucky he dropped it the Bills there was a couple there Falcons, I think they had like a 70-yard touchdown. The Saints, they had 255-plus-yard touchdowns. Um, the Chiefs, I think there was like one blown coverage. Maybe not. Um, but the last couple weeks, there's been way less miscommunication. That was against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. You know, they, they have a great offense. And Aaron Rodgers was playing Devontae. They, they were healthy on offense. Besides David Bakhtiari, they were healthy on offense. And we did pretty good against them. Allowed 24 points. But, you know, Heineke did fumble in our own red zone, which, you know, gave him some free points as well. So I thought they played really, really well in that game. The sec, because in my opinion, besides like the first two, three games, the defensive line has played pretty good. They haven't been as, you know, great as we thought they would be, but they've still been pretty good, especially the interior. They've been great, especially Jonathan Allen. The edge guys, they've been decent, but not what we thought they would be, especially um, Chase Young, but I feel like the the biggest issue was the secondary and the linebackers and the secondary in the last two, three weeks, they've played a lot better. And I think a big reason uh, for that is William Jackson being out. I mean, our best two games by far in the secondary were the Packers game and the Broncos game. And those are the two games that he did miss. And one thing I've been talking about for a while now is that, you know, 
Washington, because they did sign William Jackson, they've been playing a lot more man coverage than they did last year, and we were successful in zone coverage last year, and, you know, PFF, you got to take everything with a grain of salt, but our PFF grades for all of our players in our secondary, except for Cameron Curl, they're all better in zone coverage versus man. And, you know, we're playing more man because of William Jackson, but it's just hurting our defense, especially I feel like players like Kendall Fuller, like guys like that, it's really hurting them. And, you know, because he's better in zone, especially um, last year. And, you know, the last couple of weeks, you know, we've played because William Jackson has been out. We played a little bit more zone and it's been working really well. We allowed 17 points to the Broncos, 24 to the Packers, which, you know, allowing 24 points to most teams isn't great. But, you know, doing it against the Packers when you had, you know, a turnover in your own, you know, red zone or in your own 20 and other things, I think that was pretty solid. And they were able to keep Devontae Adams in check. I mean, he had 70 six receiving yards but 26 of those i keep saying it but it came off of an amazing catch by Devonte adams where kendall floor had great coverage on him but you know um Devonte adams just made a great catch they did well against him and uh so that's the reason why i think the washington football def team's defense is starting to turn a corner you know William Jackson being out so I'm going to be interested to see if they start playing a little bit more zone this week because William Jackson will be back this week against the Bucks. so let's see if they play a little bit more zone that is something to watch out for but the miscommunication you know they've cleared that up a little bit way less blown coverages the last couple weeks another reason why I think they've improved is Landon Collins switching to linebacker I know they don't want to say it's linebacker but it is he is playing linebacker like Jack Del Rio yesterday said he's not really playing or maybe Steve Russ that he's not really playing linebacker he's still playing safety that's not true at all he is the linebacker for us right now currently and, you know, he's playing pretty well. He had five defensive uh, stops. I think he had a sack, another tackle for a loss. And he allowed four yards on three catches in coverage against the Broncos. He was great. He was our second best defender in that game, you know, behind Jonathan Allen, in my opinion. And, you know, if he can keep this up, that can really, really help out this linebacking core. And it's been a big reason for, you know, the last couple games we've played better. We've definitely played better on defense. And even the Saints game, you know, when he was he was mostly playing linebacker, but the two times he wasn't, it was a 55-plus yard touchdown. And, you know, if you take those plays out, we win that game. But because he was in coverage, he, he you know, had a blown coverage. And that's why we've had less blown coverages. Landon Collins has been in the box more as a linebacker, which is great. I love the adjustment that the coach has made, but it should have been earlier. It should have been earlier, but that's a huge reason for our success lately. Another reason why is they're putting Cameron Curl on the field. As a result of moving Landon Collins to more of a linebacker type role, you allow Cameron Curl to get 95 plus per seventh snaps at strong safety, and that's what I love to see. He's our best safety. He's our best guy in the secondary, and it's really not even close this year. You know, maybe eventually Benjamin St. Juice or William Jackson will get close, um, but at this moment, Cameron Curl has been our best uh, player in the secondary. He's been pretty good for us. And it's, you know, they were playing him a little bit out of position in the early on in the year, playing him at free safety. And he wasn't bad at free safety. He was actually pretty good. But he's a better, strong safety. And he's been playing the last couple of weeks. And it's really helped us out. It's really helped us out having, them, having him out there on the field more i mean in that first game against the chargers they had him out there for 37 out of the 81 snaps like that's ridiculous now he's getting close to a hundred percent of the snaps which is again what you like to hear and you know we obviously some players on our defense like chase young super super disappointing so far this season if he can have a bounce back second half of the season that can really really help out this defense even more and then also Jamin Davis again he's he's still developing the Broncos game wasn't great but he's had a couple games before that where he was getting better so if he continues to develop that'll also help this defense out a ton I again don't think they're going to end out being you know end up being a top 10 defense even top 15 but they're starting you know they were dead last at 32 
in points per game in the last two games they've moved up a little bit i believe they're 28th and i believe they will continue to you know move up and maybe at the end of the season it's not where we wanted them to rank but considering the schedule if they bounce back and end up like 18 or 16 that would be very very good and encouraging for next year especially if guys like chase young jamin davis cole holcomb guys like that even benjamin st juice they have good second half of the season benjamin st juice already has had a good year but some of these other guys, if they can bounce back, because this defense is going to be a lot of the same pieces next year. Maybe a couple changes, like Landon Collins is probably going to be gone unless he restructures his contract. Maybe one of the corners is gone. But besides that, it's going to be mostly the same. It's going to be mostly the same. So these guys are going to have to figure it out. And, you know, they're going up against the Bucks this week. We sa- I said in the live stream, you cannot have miscommunication this week against the Bucks because if you do, Tom Brady will eat you up. So it's going to be a true test. And if we can hold them to under 30, I will be, um, you know, satisfied, you know, because this is a really good defense if we, or offense. If we can hold them to like 27, uh, you know, 24 points, that's going to be really good. And we'll have a chance to win again. Don't think we'll win this game, but, you know. Who knows? Any given Sunday, they've got a lot of injuries. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe if you guys are new, and turn on those notifications so you never miss a video. Peace, guys.